Hi everybody, it's Godly Thoughts for Teens. Um, we're going to talk about bullying. And um, that boys aren't the ones that just do the bullying, girls do too. So we're going to dive right into our article. Um, this is what, um, this is the website where I'm getting this article from. There are other topics um, that you can discover and explore. And if anybody has any questions, comments, you can email me at godlythoughts, with a capital G, dot for teens, dot at gmail.com. Alright, so here we go. Alright. You're probably totally over it now, seeing the video of the bigger kid standing up to the little bully who attacked him at a Sydney school. The media went on and on about it. You've probably seen sim similar things at your own school. Boys being bullied or picked on by other kids because they're naughty, slower, or short. Did you know that girls bully too? Here's how they do it. How girls bully. Randomly deciding if someone is not cool or, or in the or in their friend zone and running away and excluding them from the group. Telling others to ignore a particular individual for no apparent reason. Exposing secrets, tricking someone and sharing their secret, then telling everybody else about it. Playing jokes for a purpose of making someone look dumb st or stupid. There's a bunny in my yard. Oh my, that was weird. Okay, random. I purposely whispering in front of someone to make them feel like they're messing up. Spreading rumors about someone or calling them names. Facebooking or IMing people and and saying like if you think so and so is an idiot, like like this page. Usually they use more abusive words than idiot. What does the Bible say about bullying? This isn't a girl's list only. Boys do these things too. Girls just seem to prefer the subtitle way of dissing someone over punching them. But guess what? It isn't new. A persive person, a, a persive, a pers oh, I can't pronounce. Okay, persuasive person stands up. A persuasive person stands up, stands up to conflict, and gossip spreads. And then gossip spreads close friends. Proverbs sixteen twenty eight. It's crazy. It's nasty. It's part of our broken world. They even know that back in the Old Testament times. But just as the Bible knows the problem, the Bible also has some help along the way. What's the Bible's answer? Choose your friends carefully. The righteousness choose their friends carefully. But the way of the wicked leads them astray. Proverbs twelve twenty six. I know it isn't. I know it's easier said than done. Being popular is such a powerful thing. But it's better to hang out with people who aren't game players, or who aren't going to pressure you into doing things you regret later. Be a good friend. A friend loves at all times. A brother is born for a time of ever. Adventurousy. Proverbs seventeen seven. The friend zone game only works when people go along with it. Try being a person who can't be trusted, who is that is awkward. Okay, who is known for being reliable. Be a truthful friend, not an em enemy. Wounds from a friend can be trusted, but an enemy blatant kisses. Proverbs twenty seven six. A good friend won't say you look fabulous when someone has food hanging out of their mouth. So put away the camera phone and hand over the tissues. Don't fight fire with fire. Jesus said, I tell you, I tell you, love your enemies and pray for those who prosecute. Persecute you. That you may be children of your Father in heaven. Matthew 5:39 to 40. He wasn't just saying that to make our lives difficult. He lived it. He put up with a whole lot worse than we did. 
So don't start nasty rumors in return, or set up an alert Facebook page saying so and so is on nasty. You can fill in the blanks. Protect the bullied. Do not withhold good from those who, from those to whom it is due. When it is in your power to act. Proverbs three twenty seven. This one takes a lot of courage, so be brave. You may get heaps for it, but as Peter said, it's better if it is God's will to suffer for doing good than for doing evil. For Christ also suffered once for our sins, the righteousness for the unrighteousness, to bring you to God. 1 Peter 3, 17 to 18 If people have if you have God in your life, you will be protected from the bully. Just remember that Jesus suffered for doing good. Remember who's watching. The Lord mocks proud mockers, but shows favor to the humble and oppressed. Proverbs 3, 32-34 Power plays at school. Power plays at school can make us forget that the real people in God's hands the, the real power is in God's hands. And God isn't pleased with our foolish human games. If we say we are followers of Jesus, our patterns of friendship need to mirror God's ways. Or else we are liars. Remember God's forgiveness. But God demonstrated his own love for us in this. We are, we are, our, we are still sinners. Christ died for us. Romans 5.8 Forgive, forgive us sins. As forgive our sins as we forgive who has sinned against us. Luke 11.4 Because God is loving and gracious, He has extended the offer of forgiveness even to His enemies by sending Jesus to take the punishment for, enemy, for His enemies deserve. That's us. We have shut God out of the friend zone for most of our lives. Then all that all changes when we accept our responsibility and turn to Jesus for forgiveness. Then God offers us peace, safety, and security as a member of his family, and a promise one day of a home without pain, without fear, without suffering. That's an amazing, undeserved gift. If you get this internal perspective, then it gets a whole lot easier to forgive people who hassle you. I love that. That is so true in all of that. You guys, stick up for the one being bullied. Be brave. And stand up to them. And go, hey, what you're doing isn't right. You're making that person feel belittled about their self and worthless. And say shame on them. There are so many different ways to stand up to bullying. But one way is that we shouldn't fight them about it. Here's a situation. Let's say you see one you see a girl that everybody considers weird or stupid or nerdy. And they're being picked on by the so called popular people. What would you do? Here's what I would do. I would stand right next to her and look at those bullies clear in the eye and say what you're doing is wrong and you need to leave this girl alone. She's a human being and she has feelings and rights to feel respected here. And then you take that person that's being bullied and you two walk away together. You guys, standing up to someone is hard. It is. It's really hard to say what's on your mind because you're afraid you're going to get judged for it. But don't. Because remember who's on your side, and that is God. God's always going to be there for you. Remember, He stood up for what He believed in, and He stood up for the good, but still got embarrassed and punished for it. God took away all our sins, and that was a hard thing to do. If you can do one simple little act, and help someone, you're being more and more like Jesus every day. You guys, 
God will help that person that's being bullied. We should stand up for what we believe in. I remember watching Veggie Tales and where they sing the song in the Chocolate Bunny Factory where they go, Stand up, stand up for what you believe in. Believe in is God. He's the one true thing that you guys have. Or something like that. That's how they finish the verse. But you have to stand up for what you believe in. And being bullied is something we should all stand up. And stand up to the bully. So I'm going to pray for us. Okay? Um, dear God, I ask that you give us strength to stand up to those bullies that are bullying others. God, I ask, I just thank you for sending your son Jesus Christ to stand up for what was right. Lord, um, thank you for just making us and loving us. Um, and for helping us and being there every step of the way with us when we go through difficult times. Lord, it's your name that we pray. Amen. Alright, guys. I'm going to leave us with one final thought of the day from our word wall. Alright. Let's see. Hmm. Ooh, I like this one. I just Okay, I like this one. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That's John 3, 6. Mm -hmm. I'm going to read one more because I always like that. The, he's always with us. And that was always Caleb's. Um, guys, God is always with us. And he's never ever going to leave us alone. Alright guys, remember that God loves you. And be kind to one another, okay? And stand up for what's right. Alright, godly thoughts for teens out. Bye!